All right, so today we're gonna go over some long bones. I'm gonna wear my shirt for you. All right, so here you go. This first one here, this is gonna be an arm bone. It's the humerus, it's the upper arm bone, all right? Um, sometimes people get it confused with a femur and that's because they both form a ball and socket joint. So you have the ball and socket joint here and you have one, the pelvic girdle. If you look at the two though, they're actually quite different. So if you see them. You, they both have a head, right? But what you find is that the femur has this nice, really long neck, right? The humerus, it does have a neck, but in your lab manual, you don't have to know that it has a neck. So the way I like to think of it is that if you see one and it has no neck, uh -huh, that's humerus, right? So no neck is humerus. Femur has a nice long neck. Extend that neck up. It's got this nice long neck. They both are going to have a hump opposite of the head. And then um, with the femur, it also has the hump lower down. So this is the posterior view of the femur, All right? And then this is the humerus here. And you can see here, there's a hump here and a hump here. And on this guy, a turnum anterior, you can see opposite to the head, there's a hump. And then you can see it's hump here down below. It's kind of posterior. Yep. Yeah. All right. Many times with bones, if there is a hump, it'll start with a T. So you can have a tuberosity, a trochanter, a tubercle. The things I think about, all right, is that if it is a tubercle in our lab, the only places that have tubercles are funny places. You have this bone here, which is the humerus. That's funny, right? Yeah, that's funny. So you have the humerus here, and then the other spot that has a tubercle is going to be the pubis. So on the pubic bone, there is a tubercle, and that's where your uh, rectus abdominis ties into it. So the way I think about you're like, how's the pubic bone funny? <sighs> yeah, okay. So I have taught this for several, several years now, and um, the Ozcoxe, I have another video on that, so if you haven't seen it, check it out. This bone here, people struggle with it, right? But tubercle is right here on this V-shaped bone. And so I always mentioned it's a V-shaped bone, right? Right there, boom. And one year I had a girl who came to class and over and over she was sticking V's all over the place. She's going here with it. She was trying to do it here. And then one day she came to class and she said, oh, I think I have it. It's V-like the female organ V, all right? I won't say it because it's YouTube. So, but yeah, so it's this V here and I was like, oh my God, that's so funny. But anyway, oh, I'll be a little more G-rated since we're on YouTube. So this here, that's the pubic tubercle. The only other tubercle in this class, here. So when you see the humerus, it has a big hump, and a little hump. The big hump is your greater tubercle. The little hump is the lesser tubercle. And if you're like, oh, I can't remember that. What it, which one was the tubercle? All right, tuberosity, trochanter, tubercle. If you do no neck, tubercle. Sounds really funny, All right? So that's what's going on there. There is a groove in between them that you need to know. So it's the groove in between the tubercles. So when you look at the um, word, it says inner tubercle groove, right? That's what's going on there. You follow that groove down, you're gonna see that there is a ridge that forms. See that, right? This is a tuberosity. So it's another hump and it's named after the muscle that attaches here. That's this muscle here. That's a triangular shaped muscle. And you can feel that right there. And that's your deltoid tuberosity, right? Looking back at this guy. Femur, we know it's the femur because it has that nice long neck. If you look at these humps, those humps there are trochanters. Trochanter is a long, strong sounding word, just like this bone. Big, strong bone, makes up a fourth of your height. Trochanters, if you extend your neck, trochanter, it's a good, strong word. This is your greater trochanter, the big one, and this is your lesser. All right, so head, neck, 
greater trochanter, lesser trochanter. When you come down to the ends of the bone, and the way it works is that head side is always medial. So if this is medial, this side's medial. You have epicondyles and condyles. Epis are to the outside. So my epis are the humps here. Medial epi, medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle. You flip over to the back. They have these big knobby things. You see this better there? All right. Head side. Head side, so medial epi, medial condyle, lateral condyle, lateral epicondyle. You have a patellar surface, which is kind of this triangular shape looking thing here. That's where your kneecap, the patella, will articulate. All right? So that forms a gliding joint there. On the humerus, so on the humerus, you still have the ends of the bones here that are like the femur. So Head is always medial, it's coming towards the body. This is your medial epicondyle, so it's the larger bone that you have. You can feel that on yourself, so right here, you feel it? It's your funny bone, that's humerus, that's your funny bone. So you can feel that there when you hit it and it's not funny, that's what you're hitting. So medial epicondyle, medial because it's head side. Medial condyle, lateral condyle, lateral epicondyle. All right? You have your olecron fossa, coronoid fossa. All right, so you see how deep that one is? Can you make that out? That is your deeper fossa. You see this one? It has a U. When you see a U on a bone, that's going to be your ulna. The only other U-shaped bone is the one here, the hyoid. So the olecron process is going to attach to this big spot here. And that's going to end up forming a hinge joint, right? just like a door hinge. That's what it forms, a hinge joint. Right? So you have your olecron, trochlear notch. If you look here, there's another groove. This is where the radius is going to attach. You know this is the radius because it has a nice round circular shape there. The head of the radius is nice and round. You can find the radius of the cir circle. It also looks like a radio antenna up here, but people don't seem to know what that is anymore. So, I tried. All right, so the head of it, it's like that. This is your radial notch, trochlear notch there, radial notch there. Coming down, you have a pointy structure here on the ulna. You have a pointy structure here, all right? Opposite to this pointy structure is another groove. That is where the ulna attaches. This is your ulnar notch. Each of these pointy things, there and there, can you see them? Each of these pointy structures is a styloid process. You're going to have that here, that hump. And then you have one over here. So that's your styloid process to each of them. So you have three styloid processes here at the temporal bone, the radius, and the ulna. All right. The other structure you have to know on this bone is right here. It is a hump on the bone. Chances are it starts with a T. It's named after the bone. You have the radial tuberosity. It's right there. So that's where this bulkier biceps brachii muscle is going to tie in. Looking at the lower leg, the lower leg, you have two bones that make it up. So you have two bones in the forearm, two bones in the lower leg. You have one bone in the upper arm, one bone in the thigh. All right, so there's this one to one, two to two ratio. When you look at the bottom of your leg, you will see that there is a thinner bone, and that is this one. It is lateral, so it's gonna go to the outside of the body. So it's gonna sit on this side of the leg and on this side of the leg. Your other bone is the tibia, right? So fibula, tibia. Let's talk about this one first. You have to know the ends of this bone. You will see that one side, right, is more oblong shaped. You see that? And that the other side is a little more flat and stocky. 
this flatter, more stocky, kind of knobby-like, is the head. It goes up. So this is superior. Many times a head is going to be towards the top. This part here, the more oblong shaped, the more oval shaped end goes down. This is a lateral bone, remember? And because it's a lateral bone, this is going to be your lateral malleolus. And then this is the head. Because you have a lateral one, guess what? You probably have a medial one. So where would your medial one be? All right, so let's look at the tibia. The tibia, if you look at the bottom of the tibia, there is an oval shaped object here. And this is gonna be your medial malleolus. You have an inferior articular surface here that articulates with the foot, specifically talus. So the way I think about that one is you have tibia and articulates with the tarsals and the specific tarsal that tibia articulates with is talus. I know, say that a couple of times real fast. So the tibia articulates with the tarsals and the specific tarsal that tibia articulates with is talus. That's gonna be at your inferior articular surface. All right, so medial, it's going to help us identify these condyles up here. This is medial, come straight up. We're on this condyle. This is my medial condyle. This is my lateral condyle. Come into the front. There is a hump here. This is where on your knee, right? So the knee's right here. The patellar ligament attaches here. So remember what I said before, if it's a hump, many times a muscle, is gonna to attach to it. So in this case, remember you have your quadricep muscles up here. They turn into the quadricep tendon, comes down, attaches to the patella. So muscle to bone, like the kneecap, muscle to bone ends up being a tendon. Bone to bone, so going from the patella to the tibia, bone to bone is a ligament. So that's your patellar ligament. And it inserts here. Come down and you're gonna see that you have this crest and that's going to be your anterior marginal crest. And you're done on this bone. Well, I appreciate you watching. I hope it helps you out. If you have any other recommendations or need things that I should cover, just let me know. I'll give you a little bit of insight, though. So one of the things I like to do is identify shapes with the bones. So if you have not sat down and tried to identify a shape for the different structures, I would encourage you to do that. The reason is because sometimes when you're looking at something, it's a little bit easier if you can say, hey, it's oval shaped or it has this oblong shape or it's kind of triangular shape. And then also think about homologous structures, things that are similar. So when you look at um, the head of something and it resembles the head of another structure that can help you remember long term that a head is gonna have this kind of shape and that this bone is not called this because it has this, that, or the other. All right, so that's gonna help. If you're kind of like, oh man, I don't know where to start, let me give you a little picture. So to give you an idea, right, if you are looking at like the humerus, that would be up here, just find different shapes that you can see, whether it's a rectangle or a circle. Um, if it's a hump, draw a circle for it. Right? And then draw the same thing for a femur and just kind of go through. So this video may mirror images stuff and I'm sorry, I could have pulled it up on my computer for you, but I'm a slacker. So I'm going to blame it on being quarantined. There you go. All right. Drop me an email if you need me.